preparing for this talk, I, I, you always go to IMDb first to see, and you, you have a credit of 35 acting roles, and this has been done in, in less than a decade. I, I think you're, when you really broke through, you had seven films coming out in 2015, from kind of like zero, even though they were made under, you know, during three, three years. years. And, and then, of course, you won the Oscar for your role as Jarda Wegener in The Danish Girl in 2016. So this is a very impressive trajectory for a young actress who's not even 30 yet. What, what would you say are the main ingredients that made you come this far so fast? I mean, it's I mean I, I'm, I'm, I'm so fortunate that I'm able to call uh, what is my job, my passion. So it's like, I mean, it's like, where do I start um, with something that I've been introduced to um, since I was a child, through my mom, through my family, through this f film festival, that was something I talked about the other day. Um, I was, you know, I tried out for theatre school, didn't get in. Sometimes it's hard to talk about what was the ingredients for you to make it, because mm -hmm. it's also part of the part of the journey is all the no's that no mm -hmm. one really knows about. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I got rejected four times to theatre school. I was going to start studying at the university. Uh, then I had uh, a chance to read this, you know, um, I have a few scenes from a film called Tidia mm Smivakyat, -hmm. Lisa's first film. And I remember that I just thought to myself, I was like, wow, I've only been up to like parts in Sweden or auditioned and it's all, always kind of the teenage girl or um, she has problem at school or with the boyfriend or, you know, quite one dimensional ideas mm. of young women. And this was like a train wreck of emotions and complexity. And I remember I was like, wow, this is, you know, I, I might not be able to do this for a career because I actually thought you like maybe had to go to theatre school to do mm. that kind of role. But I was like, I, I, I need to get a shot at this. I, I want to show what I can do. And, and she gave me a, a chance. And, mm. and then it's all the people that kind of, you know, dared to believe in you. And, and then it's a lot of, it's a lot of hours of work, you know. And it's, no one really knows that maybe, you know, um, it kind of opened up. I'm, I mean, I'm also kind of a product of uh, the fact that I kind of managed to break into English-speaking film uh, in a time when suddenly, maybe not only this industry, but all industries are becoming more and more global. You look for talent now everywhere in the mm. world. And, um, and, and technology was a big change in that. Suddenly, you didn't have to be in the room. <laughs> you could do self-tapes. I mean, now you can do them on your iPhone. So people can actually, I mean, I can do it too and send you a director. I was like, oh, I have a scene. I put up my uh, iPhone and I record. Back then it actually, I mean, if I did a scene, it was like with a camera, you had to plug it in, you had mm. to buy all this equipment, get it up. It took like four hours to upload on your mm. computer. Then I tried to learn how to edit. And then to send it took like five hours and the internet broke down mm. and you had to do it all over again. <laughs> all those kind of things. So I did maybe 20 self-tapes for things abroad that my Swedish agent introduced to me and I never heard anything back. Mm. And that was like, you know, weeks of work for nothing. Mm. I thought, I was like, well, I don't even get a no, so how am I, why do I do this? And that's when I said, you know, I, I think that I should, um, if, you, if you hear about an, uh, another audition, I, I want to get on a flight and just go to London. And that's when um, Snow White and the Huntsman came mm. up. And we, I which you did not get then which I did not in the end, right? Again, still that is the, yeah. kind of maybe one of the pivotal points. But I, I remember this moment, because I know your agent, Laura, and she was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, and we were like, she's gonna, get, she's gonna make it big, and then like two years later, you win the Oscar, so <laughs> yeah, she, she was right. But she what I'm saying is still, that. that was something that I didn't get in the end. Yeah. But I got the chance to be taken out to um, America, and I did a screen test, and suddenly, people had seen what I did. Mm -hmm. I was down to the last three girls or something. And, um, so yeah, it's probably, that's maybe the answer to mm -hmm. it. So you've been working so much during these years. I was wondering, what's it like that your life is just different shoots in different countries? What's like the best and the worst thing with being on a shoot? I love to travel, first of all. I mean, um, I, I've been, actually counted the other day, I think I've been to 50 countries. 
because my friend gave me this app. And you yeah, yeah. Where mm-hmm. you've been? It's called Bean. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Um, uh, and, and and most of them, I think, I've been to due to work, you know, mm-hmm. or I've gone back because I love it. But it's um, 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 the, the chance to go to places where I don't know why I would have ended up there anymore. I've been to Anna Karenina took me. We flew to St. Petersburg in the middle of the winter in January. Uh, we took uh, a train for 12, 14 hours um, up north. Then we had a bus for four hours and then a hovercraft for one and a half hours. <laughs> and we run it, arrived at an island called Itkitsi Island mm. where we were not going to stay because they didn't have any facilities that could be heated in the winter. But something happened. The, hot- we, the hovercraft broke down, so we had to stay there for five days. <laughs> we didn't shower. <laughs> and we slept in our... I had, like... We had these kind of Canada geese scooter yeah. well, jackets, whatever they're called. Slept in those. It was an adventure, but it was uh, I, well. I forgot to say also it was minus thirty nine to four, minus forty two degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that okay. was an adventure. It yeah. was tough. I think we all, you know, wanted to. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's hard because that was one of the most memorable and fantastic experiences I've had. Mm. But it was. Yeah. So what are some of the other not that fantastic but kind of challenges with this kind of... Places? Yeah, Places? just being constantly in, at a film shoot. Uh, it's not really like normal life. Uh, well, no, uh, it, no, it's... Uh, I mean, I haven't really had a home for four years. Um, I've been in Airbnbs, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and hotels, and that's just, you know, I... I'm about to get into my new home that's been ready, and I can't wait to have a base. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, um, but it's also it's interesting because of course even I I've been looking at you know at the film world and industry. It seemed so far away. I never thought I was going to work abroad, and 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 it has of course we the, the film industry kind of lives off of the illusion of the glamour mm-hmm. that it is, but in reality it is quite different. And I still, when I bring my, you know, because uh, all my closest friends are actually, you know, are still the friends from from Sweden. Mm. Um, and they're not in the film industry, but, they, you know, some of them travel a lot, but they come with me. And they're like, really? You know, even on these big films, like Tomb Raider, they came and visited. And they're like, are you in, like, behind the gas station in the bathroom changing? <laughs> I was like, yeah. You know, because... That's kind of what you do because it's the trailer part. It's only the the promotional part, mm. which is normally where the glamour comes in a bit, and they get to dress you up in nice clothes, and you go on carpets, and you travel, and and actually on photo shoots, th- that's when they have all those kind of cool, expensive trailers with like amazing food set up <laughs> everywhere. Mm. And, and on film shoots, it's much more like a circus, mm. and you it's much more like working mode. Mm. So I wanted, of course, to talk to you about um, acting. Uh, that's what you do. And you've played so many different kind of characters throughout the years. But I thought maybe we can just start with your character, Ines, in Euphoria, because that's the film we just saw. Um, so, so could you elaborate a little bit about the process from reading the screenplay to developing the character together with Lisa Langsat, the director, and then, then going to the shoot? Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was a bit different, of course, because it had been a longer process. Because I came on quite early on as a producer. Yes, maybe it's the e- first. Ma- yeah, first maybe thing even produced. before. I think we kind of agreed on doing it together before we even had talked about me being in it. Okay. So, so, so you were on board as producer with Vicarious before. Yes. Okay. So then natu- you cast yourself. Um, <laughs> no, because name. of course my work as a producer would be to you know only be there as a great support for my director and her yeah. artistic choices. So, but that's how it always has been. <coughs> Lisa and I have never decided to work together. It's always kind of just be a natural process, and mm-hmm. I know Lisa and I are quite similar that way. I think we would kind of feel trapped if we were like maybe we should do something next mm. year. Yeah. Then it would kind of, you know, force mm. us to, to a direction instead of it happening. But when I came on board as an actor mm. on the film, um, Ines, you know, it's it's very different the way you approach um, characters from each film. It depends very much on the filmmaker. And of course, this was now a girl woman I worked with already before. So I kind of had this language with Lisa already. Um, uh, for me, uh, I mean, of course, we. I, I, I think personally, I, I loved the, 
um, and how she portrayed the, cat, the, the sisters, their relationship. I think that personally got mm. to me. And then, of course, it has all those bigger issues and, and questioning you know, and discussions about death, something that we <coughs> too often in real life des decide not to talk mm. about. Um, um, but that thing of the, the questioning of being brought up in the same family, same blood and flesh, but um, do you have any responsibility towards people that you are family with or do you choose what your family are? Mm. Um, how can you turn out to be so different even though that you've had m maybe had the same experience growing up, but also that you went through the same thing, but you actually think that a complete different thing happened mm. and how you kind of relate to that. So I, I, for me, it was finding uh, Ina's truth about, you know, she kind of tackled her, you know, life's journey and maybe a trauma that happened to her very young in, 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 in wanting to, not having to talk about it, not deal with it because that makes her actually be able to move on in life. Mm. And her sister may, is maybe complete opposite and, and really needs to feel all the emotion and actually um, uh, uh, work with them, you know? Um, and, and, but then that mean, meant that I wanted to do a lot of my pre-work with uh, Ava. Mm. Too. Yeah, she, wanted she does an absolutely amazing performance. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we met quite early. To <coughs> Eva Green, who plays the Green, sister. Yeah. Yeah. To, to, to make sure that, you know, I, I love that Lisa never, even though Emily is sick, um, and of course you feel for her incredibly, but I thought it was interesting because she never made any of these two a victim and also said that either of them can... can can make the wrong step or, or, or so he was always trying to find the balance and the kind of dark Now you are on the theater stage. Yes. Let's uh, let's uh, wait for a technician to to uh, I'll come and like this yes. To see if anyone else someone runs in uh, with a new uh, There we go. Mm. Um, so, of course, uh, Eva is, is brilliant, but I must say for me personally, I'm such a huge fan of I'm Charlotte, Charlotte Rampling. Me too. So, oh so I God, need yeah, to I mean, ask you what, what I is mean, she we like? Got, we got an amazing cast. I was so happy, you know, because I introduced the idea of Eva early on because, uh, and, and, and Lisa went straight to meet her. And then we had Charlotte, um, who, came on board. I mean, you should have seen, we had this incident, I think it was one week in. I think we were kind of all gathered around the fact that we were such big fans. And, and Rob Hardy, the DP, who mm. both did Ex Mac and A Testament of Youth with me, so we're okay, very okay. close friends of yeah. mine. And we, uh, we sat behind the monitor, Rob, Lisa, and I, and it was Charlotte rambling, walking through the forest in a wide shot. That was the scene. And we just sat like this. <laughs> and we're like. <laughs> <laughs> and we all just like, we just like jumped. And then she came over and we were like, yeah, no, uh, we should do it again. And like, <laughs> it's really, we were just fangirling, you know, by that monitor. But then Charlotte, I mean, besides the fact that she's an incredible actor, mm. um, the, the most amazing thing, we, we all kind of stayed in, in, in this beautiful, uh, manner whilst shooting and Charlotte has this ability of she's I think 72 or 73 looking gorgeous uh, but she has she's it's almost like she's kept all of her ages within her mm. that she's been through in life so it's like she was one of the most um, um, wise and thoughtful women. Uh, so some evenings I could have just like sit and listen to her and, 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 and you know admire the life and the experiences that she wanted to share. Then the other day you had this like teenage Charlotte who's just like running around, flirtatious, like making everyone in a good mood and just like has a swagger that is just you know mind blowing. And then, you know, cut to, uh, by, by the end of the day, she's like a little kid, you know? Mm. And just about, and you could see that that is also what acting is. Mm. Acting is truly, the, the, the tools that we use are, are experiences and are able to like um, jump back 
in all those different memories uh, of, of, of different situations you've been mm. in and keep that within you and you could really see that that's what she's done and she's aged like the most gracefully. Mm. And, yeah. and, and it's funny when you, that you bring up uh, that experience is, is a tool because I was reading an interview with your mother who's also an actress and who's sitting here uh, in, in the front. Uh, Maria, she, she said that you need to get as much experience as possible from life to be able to act. So how do you gather experience while or between you, your work? Because um. it's kind of like, it's hard. You just need to live. But if you live in these kind of sheltered shoots, do you have some plan that in between these you do some, no, I don't know? No, it's about being open. I don't think, you know, if I'm on a shoot, I just spent five months in Cape Town mm. with, a, you know, 90% of the crew being local. I went to a place which is not only the most ex beautiful country that I've ever been to, but that has history that is so apparent. Hard so, going, yeah. I mean, so uh, live life. I think that's, yeah, go out and talk to people, mm. do things, um, at work. That's to me, you know, gives me ex a lot of experiences. Mm. And I feel fortunate due to my work that I get to see and, 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 and meet as many people as possible. Mm. Um, so, uh, um, you know, I think it's also very different. Some people get experiences through reading books, seeing films. Mm. Uh, I don't think there's any right or wrong. I think it's no. about being in a, in a moment of feeling kind of open-minded to, to other people. And, and stories and mm. and 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 it be in you know be in the moment, um, yeah. Mm. Do you have some kind of spiritual practice, like meditation or yoga or something like that? Yeah, I meditate. Mm. I um, I find that that gives me. It was actually my my dad. He used to <laughs> when I was a kid. I don't know when I when I grew up. It wasn't really. Now it's very popular, you know. Uh, to, to meditate and that people know uh, how much benefits that has. When I grew up, I didn't hadn't really heard about it much in Gothenburg or San Barriera outside mm. Boros. And instead, it was this thing when my dad, you know, we were he had five children. I had four siblings during the time when I grew up at, at his house, and I bet it was quite rowdy at some <laughs> points. And and then he had this thing. He just, you know, in in the kitchen, you sometimes have this like watch. To, to, mm. to, you know, to cook eggs yeah. or whatever. And it was like a little egg that you could turn, mm. a timer. And then suddenly when it got a bit too much, he was like, no. And he just went up and he grabbed that and he went straight down to the basement. And then you knew he was going to come back 20 minutes later. And then he was like all chilled. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and then I learned that that was called meditation. And he was like, no, I just sit there on a chair. I was like, sit there on a chair. I was like, I couldn't get it. And then, of course, I was mid-teens. I had moved away from my home in Stockholm. You started the ballet. Yeah, training, yeah, so I moved away quite young and lived by myself from the age of 15. And then I had been, you know, calling back home, and it was quite stressful. I mean, it was long days and intense, and, and uh, it was, I, I, yeah, I, I was very stressed. And then my dad said, you know, have you tried meditation? And I was like, I don't think that's going to work for me. And... You know, I haven't heard a lot of other people who've done that. I've, I've just read that Buddhists do that. Mm -hmm. But then I went at 16 years old to this Zen meditation course over three days somewhere on Sardamal. Mm -hmm. um, and I, w I think I was the only one under 45 or 50. Um, um, but I, yeah, I went there and that is still, I've, I've done some other, you know, courses, but that's the practice mm -hmm. that I still go back to. Oh. Um, so... Uh, I was thinking about, uh, I just need to ask you about Lara Croft, about what kind of preparations, because that's a physical role, and something like Ines is a more of an emotional role, I guess. started my Tomb Raider training whilst filming before it. Okay, and what did that training look like? Because you had the same trainer that did Alexander Skarsgård for yeah. Tarzan, right? So Which I'm, was I'm, a pretty good result. Yeah, well, well, I said, because Alex is a dear friend of mine, yeah. and he had read that I was going to do it, and I immediately, that day, I got a text from Alex. He was like, are you doing Laurie? I was like, you need to call Magnus right now. And I was like, texting back, I was like, is that going to make me look like you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, almost as. I mean, I, Magnus was incredible. 
Um, uh, I was able, it was really, I don't know, I think I'm... So what's the regimen? You have to eat all the time, train eat all, the, all time. the time. Yeah. I mean, for me to put on, I had to I put on six kilos. In pure muscle. Yeah, it's yeah. all gone. Uh, <laughs> you uh, can still carry the chair. No, no, but it's, it's um, uh, yeah, I mean, and I told him, I was like, does this mean that I'm, I think every single girl will understand what I mean. It's like, will I be able to maybe do a pull-up? by yeah, the end of exactly. nine months. He was like, yeah, you will. I was like, I don't really believe you though. <laughs> you know, and, and the first day I remember we were um, hanging, like, like, he was like, this is a bar, can you just hang? Mm. And, I, and I did, and he was like, okay, the first exercise is like, if you just try and like, you know, he showed, he was like, you, you lift your shoulders, you don't have to actually pull yourself yeah. up. And I was like, he was like, you try. He was like, I was like, he was like, okay, try. I was like, oh yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and it was like, he was like, yeah, I was like, you don't understand, this is me trying. <laughs> and, and, and nothing happened. And then after like three, four months. Could you do chin? Suddenly, and it was this weird reaction because it was not like, yeah, it was like the surprise. And over, I was like, oh my God, it's actually happening. <laughs> and I actually came up. And, and, wow. and, and I was able to do like five or six pull ups. Wow. In the end. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. That was really, yeah, it was cool. Um, so let's go over to, to what we uh, brushed upon already with uh, you um, being a producer on Euphoria. So you started your own company together with, is it one? Charles Collier. Yeah. yeah. And um, this is the first film you produced. So yes. why did you start Vicarious Productions? Um, due to the fact that I, it came naturally because I had done several films uh, leading up to um, Euphoria where I, I think I showed clear interest, you know, in the filmmakers that I made, um, and they kind of, you know, I had close relationship with them and the producers, sometimes writers. They kind of invited me then to come board on projects from an earlier uh, point. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't just an actor, you know, uh, hired to come in for rehearsals and then the shoot, but instead I was maybe involved a few months mm -hmm. before. And naturally, I felt like, well, I love making films, and this is how I want to be part of it from mm. the beginning. I was also invited to the edit and post-production and have learned a lot. And, and, and so then it didn't feel like a big step. I just like, well, I've kind of been on this journey mm. now a few times, but I would love to be there from the moment when the idea is just an idea and, and then be there for the whole entire journey. Mm. So what's your kind of plan, strategy? What kind of films does the company want to make? Um, ooh, um, good stories. And I, I mean, it's really hard to kind of narrow it down because it's not a genre. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, right now, I've, I've been, I have some ideas. I'm working with two really good female writers that are really impressive. Um, I'm reading a lot of books. Um, and, and, but, you know, it's nothing I can talk about right now because mm -hmm. everyone who of knows... Independent film too. It's kind of, it's very common in, in production companies that you have maybe six things running at the same time, and then you kind of really do. It was like, well, this is definitely the one that, you know, has come the furthest, and that will happen. And then suddenly that's put on ice because something happened or someone, and then suddenly something mm, else starts yeah. to get a bit of momentum. So we'll see. Yeah. Mm. So I was thinking, it must be the case that you get you pretty much get offered any role between, say, 20 and 35, because everyone wants to work with you. What kind of instructions have you given your agent on which screenplays to actually pass on all the way to you? First of all, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm ex extremely um, fortunate. I mean, all actors, uh, including me, feeling, I think it's just within your DNA, <laughs> thinking that you, this might, might be, be my last role. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a weird one. And of course, it's changed a lot, you know, over the last few years. And I, I, I have the ability to work now, especially now when it's come to the point when I maybe then can do mm. my own things, mm. things that I want to do. The difficult thing is to find good stories. It's really difficult. Mm. And it's very apparent when you come up on a, you know, level when when it's some of the best filmmakers, the best writers and pro producers, and you get an insight and they're like, well, they know, you know? And then you realize, oh my God, they're struggling too. Mm. Everyone is. It's, 
it's really a work of art mm. to be able to find not only the idea but have have the right tools or talent to to make those stories come alive mm. um, um, and for me it's about good stories but it's so much about the people that I would choose to work with mm. maybe so even more now mm. than ever and for me it's so would you basically always want the director attached that you want to work with to say yes to yes them? I would say that that is I, I, when I've read something that I really like, either now I would try and see if I could do it myself, mm -hmm. you know, um, or then I wait until it, because filmmaking is, I mean, I look up uh, to directors, I, you know, the, it's, it's, it's such a world of, of knowledge. It's not just, it's, an, it's the, the ideas, but it's the vision, it's the mm. music, it's the communication with actors and a crew. Um, it's uh, having the eye to put it all together and then edit with an editor, maybe you know. It's that, and so so it it really means that a, a one story that's a, a script that is really good could end up very different in the hands mm. of a, uh, someone who doesn't know how to how to handle it. Mm. And then an extremely simple idea. I've read scripts when I'm like. Well, the script doesn't really give me much of an idea what this is, but then I meet the director and the vision mm. that comes through of that person explaining what they want to achieve, then that is the movie. Mm. So, uh, and actors and DPs to me. I'm happy that cinematographers are give, and editors are given much more credit nowadays mm. for mm. the work that they do. Mm. Who are some of the directors that you think you've learned the most from working with? Um, I'm going to mention Lisa. Of course. Like I said after the three, three films that we've films, made. Yeah. Um, and also because it was my first film. I mean, she had to teach me a yeah, lot. And you got the good about years, 20 <laughs> years old anything. for that role. So. And we also probably learned together. It was her first feature film yeah. too. Mm. Um, then I... Um, um, Derek C. in France. And which film did you do? Uh, Light Between Oceans. Mm -hmm. He did um, Blue Valentine and The Place Beyond the F Pines, two other yeah. really, really good films. He's almost, I'm not a method director. I love ex like preparation to max. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that makes me be free on the set. But he's almost like a method director. So what did that mean? Um, he kind of, put, you know, was, the crew was very tough. They kind of kicked not kicked out the crew, they sometimes maybe felt, it was because he built like this house and he was like, I want everyone to come out and live here. The whole crew like stayed out at this place. He was like, but then I want the scene to be played out anywhere around this house. And maybe if you actors would choose to go outside, then that's what happens. So we have this boom guy and we have a yeah. DP and then it's him. So the crew had to like, uh, maybe go to, may, may go to the woodshed where we all to put on makeup in the morning uh, and, and then everyone just had to hide and then the, <laughs> but the interesting thing was that we we really kept it to the script but we improvised ourselves because me and my co-actor Michael we we were like, we can't improvise because you've given us this Australian accent to do. And I can't <laughs> exactly. do it. I, I've, I've worked five months of trying to be able to say these words correctly. Exactly, there's no improvisation. So, but instead we kind of improvised ourselves in and then out of the scene. So sometimes, you know, everything in the house was able, was in, 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 the, er in the time and the era. And even if down to, he had asked the, the department, if you opened a can, or uh, even the you know the spirit bottle had real alcohol in them, and the, or the cans were made with like 1920s tags and everything. Um, so he kind of had the cameraman kind of following me, and I picked some carrots, and I decided to start a stew in the kitchen. And suddenly, um, uh, you know, my, uh, Michael's character was in the kitchen, and the scene naturally ended up starting there but he decided to go to the living room and then I followed so it was kind of like this wild thing and new things happening each time and then you had a director who was like crawling <laughs> after us <laughs> trying to be out of shot like <laughs> hiding under a chair <laughs> well, like suddenly I was like it's kind of distracting Derek but he's like no don't mind me I'm just down here <laughs> so Maybe if you, if you get to choose uh, one director that you want to work with, that you haven't worked with, who, who would that be? 
It's very high. I met, I, I'm here at this film festival. I saw Michael Haneke's or films here the first time. I'm mm -hmm. a huge fan. Yeah, me too. Um, Andrea Arnold, I mentioned to mm -hmm. I would love to work with her. Um, Jacques Audiard. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about Joachim Van Tri I mean, it's an mm, endless Joachim source. Tria, yeah. We actually had lunch before, and I also love that I mentioned that three of my favorite films this year were first time directors. Mm. So, you know, I wouldn't be able to share it to so many, but I was blown away, and I thought that they had an incredible, fresh eye and were extremely brave. and. And, and I would love to work with any, I, I called up two of them actually mm. and, and asked to come and see them and have a coffee. And that's the cool thing, I'm really... That's a real uh, privilege to have that position that they're gonna say yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but also to be able to do it in the nice way of my, I actually did that before I, my films came out. Mm. A, some of the films I think I got from s meeting the, the filmmakers and I kind of, you know, in a nice way, found a way of, you know, not hunting them down on the street or anything, not being free. <laughs> but, uh, you know, having maybe an agent and if there's any way that you can send this email through, I'm, I'm a huge fan, you know. Mm. So, uh, of course, I was reading a lot of interviews and you mentioned it in your thank you speech as well, that you had this kind of epiphany when you did Tulip Fever and you did a scene with Holiday Granger and you realized, okay, this is the first film in five films in a row that you actually didn't do a scene with another yeah. female yeah. actor. It was the I don't, yeah, four films in a row. Yeah. So, and now, of course, the whole uh, fall has been painted by the whole uh, Me Too, it is not turning in Sweden, this um, revolution. Um, what, what do you think is the importance of the events the last couple of months? Oh, I think we're just feeling it and seeing it at the moment. I, I'm, 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 I'm so thrilled to feel like the it's it's the, the this kind of wonderful train has left the station, and I don't think it's going to stop. Mm. Uh, what I think is a wonderful wonderful is that I think any in any society when there's a big uproar, a big social change, or there's something that is so much up in the air that is a discussion that is going on way beyond our industry, like everywhere. Uh, I think that's a hub where new culture will flourish. Mm. And it's a very creative time at the moment. And like I mentioned in my speech too, I've, um, I've sadly then, even though I've, I've always seen myself aware and, 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 and a feminist, and still I've kind of was part of, mm. you know, the, the structure I didn't question it because I was afraid of being, you know, loud or I've always, as a woman, been kind of put in the position, you should be happy, you know? Mm. And, 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 and with other women, we were like, I, I could walk in in industries and feel like, oh my God, he, here are all these women that I looked up to in, in films and, and that I have been a huge inspiration and reason to wh why I'm doing this. And yet I kind of didn't know anyone because we were never put in the same jobs mm. and over the last few months actually I mean at the Golden Globes and even here at the festival um, there's been like this um, um, a platform and forum where suddenly I had actresses who are I mean who I'm huge fans of calling me during Christmas you know it's like hi or sending me an email and suddenly I, I'm chatting with these women and we start to get to know each other, mm. come up with ideas, start to share inspiration of things you could do. And, and then I go to the red carpet and Golden Globes and we're just like waving across the room and like hugging and I'm like, oh my God, this is such a nice feeling. Mm. And, and, and I've, um, you know, I'm gonna continue to work with the, a lot of amazing men but I'm happy that all these women will now come along and I, I think there's other stories that will come to the surface due to this mm. and, and, and which is needed. That's why we're telling, so that's why we have culture, film. We, we want to bring the stories up to the surface that sometimes are forgotten and, 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 and that needs to be heard and to do that you need to make sure that some of the biggest um, you know, uh, sections of, of our uh, of, of our society and minorities will, will get their voice. Mm, for sure. Um, so I guess it's a pretty 
busy time for you now. What, what's, what's your plans during the next couple of months? Where are you going after this? Um, I am, I'm gonna, um, gonna go to Stockholm mm -hmm. tomorrow, oh no, tonight, and mm -hmm. we have a premiere tomorrow. Really mm -hmm. exciting and see some more of my friends and um, then do press and then I'm gonna start the um, um, Tomb Raider tour. Then that's probably super massive. That's yeah, the I thing, think. Right? Well, I've already done about twenty-five days of press. Okay. For it already, wow. and but that's just the long lead press. It's called. It's all the magazines and covers and yeah. long interviews that you do that comes out during the time the film comes out. Uh, and uh, and the tour is like three or four weeks of doing TV shows and go to different countries and travel and talk, 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 mm. talk about that. So how do you like this part of it? I mean, some actors it's hate it, but. Yeah, I don't like to say the word hate because... Yeah, my it's friend always says you can't hate anything else no, than no, Hitler, but No, but it's maybe the least fun of my job. Yeah. But it's mostly when it comes down to those five-minute interviews. And you don't really get the chance to It's always to the same question. This is what's nice. Yeah. To have actually you know, have a conversation is fun. Um, yes, you um, went into my trap of saying that this is life. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, I mean, I actually prefer journalism when I get the chance to have at least half an hour, at yeah. least, and not less than that. Um, um, but, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a new film. I, I can't yet. I hope that maybe in a week or two I can talk about it. Mm. Uh, a film that I start in May. And I'm also going also gonna to do and go and do a short film with a director in LA, uh, which okay. is like, we do it for nothing. I mean, it, it's, we kind of uh, just gathered a group of people uh, and I'm a huge fan of, of him and it's, um, um, I, have, I have to know, I want, I don't know. Yeah, of course, you probably can't talk. I just I thought maybe know, you I can say I, something. I, it's like, I, I feel he would be fine, but now I don't know and it's come, well, I'm, I shouldn't, maybe not. But um, he, he's made a really cool idea and it's actually kind of a short film slash music video with okay. a cool band. So Interesting. Yeah, it's very We'll awesome. keep our eyes open <laughs> with that. Strange. And of course, you're a member of the Academy nowadays, since you won your uh, Oscar. So we were chatting over lunch that you're also seeing a lot of films. Yeah, I mean, it's the it's like a wonderful Christmas gift that now appears every... every. I mean, you, you get invitations to screenings in many, many different parts of the world. So depending on where you are, you can catch up. Uh, but then you also get screeners um, with your name watermarked on it. <laughs> yeah, you don't want leave. that to leak it online. Yeah. So I'm kind of afraid traveling with them sometimes. But um, yeah, that means that I, you know, get to see the films sometimes mm. months before they come out. And during it's sometimes hard finding the time. But during Christmas it's fun because then you have this pile, and then for two weeks you just like have to see a new one every and day. And are you going to the academies? Uh, not this year. No, no. not this year. Yeah. Cool. So, actually, our time is up, oh. unfortunately. Um, I don't know if, if... I guess there's a screening coming up. Uh, can we get some more one, time? Or one. Is there someone who's responsible who can say... Any, who can, say stop can we have any questions? Because I thought that maybe we could take... If you want to, we could take some audience questions. Yeah, that would yeah be nice. let's do that. It's, it's all up you to choose. you. You choose. You're monitoring. Oh, let's this. see who looks... I feel Who like looks it. like they might have? I'm like, of course, I'm going to choose the woman here in the front. Uh, maybe I can borrow the, the mic. Yeah. First of all, thank you for a wonderful film. I had a great cry during it. <laughs> I found it very moving. No, but in a, it was very oh, moving. <laughs> no, that shows that it's a good film if it moves me. But I was wondering, in your preparation for this part, did you go to one of these places where they have, yes, Let's go. Uh, I didn't go to one, but um, Lisa had done a very extensive you know, uh, preparation before making this film. And then, of course, uh, before we started to shoot, I, I read brochures, I watched... Uh, there's tons of material that you can find, documentaries. Uh, there's a lot on YouTube. Um, it's actually so much information. It was quite... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough watch. The, the scene that you see in the end where, where Emily takes her drink, that scene is kind of a copy of how it, how it works. Hmm. That's the... Uh, they almost always have to film it because of legal aspects um, because they need to then ask 
like she did. Mm. Um, do you, by name, want to take this? And they say, yes, it's my own choice. Um, the chocolate thing, they do too. Often, because they, you know, that information about it tastes quite bitter. And maybe you want to have a sweet. Um, and um, it was kind of, you know, it's a strange thing because death is, we don't talk about it, mostly because it's the most um, natural thing about life and the one thing that we know about and still we know nothing about it. Um, so uh, the kind of horror that we go through and the fear of uh, going through yourself or losing someone is a very tough journey. but. It's interesting that the, the, the final moment, the step between life and death, and that was something that struck me watching it. And it was almost like I didn't know if I, I was like, I didn't know if I wanted to watch it first. I was kind of rejective because it was there. You could find it on YouTube, several of these videos. And I sat there and in the end, you know, it was some of them had their families or someone who were by themselves. And it's that moment of you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting, and and then I was waiting for something to happen, and and it's just the natural <laughs> step over, and you hear the birds outside, and some are flushing the toilet from the other side of the room, you, you know, it's but, and I think Lisa managed to capture that. We shot it in Germany, in Bavaria. So, yeah, the whole place is gorgeous, as you saw. It was this baron who had uh, a manor and, and a garden he had been working on for like 30 years. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's a privately owned place. Yeah. Okay, let's... Uh, we have to stop? No, we can go one on. One more. Yes, it was yes. the thumb up. Let's take another question. Should we take one from up there? He was fast. Oh. That guy. If, okay. you're, if you're loud. Loud voice, please. Yeah. Tack så hemskt mycket. Jag har Jag blir jätte berörd. Jag, jag hoppas att ni, alltså, ja. jag hoppas att jag får se vad, vad du gör någon dag så jag också kan bli inspirerad. Det handlar om att ge och ta tillbaka. Så, tack, tack så hemskt mycket. Vi ses där ute. <laughs> då kan vi ta en, en, en sista här. Vi tar tjejen, blonda tjejen där. Där kvinnan. Ja, just det. Ja, så. Um, the question was if I, any of the characters that I play, if I, if I really felt like I was close to it or could relate to it. Um, oh my God, um, my job is like I, I try to, 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 to relate to all of them, even though they're sometimes quite tricky. Um, 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 it's, it's hard. I mean, it, you know, I, I've done period, yeah, oh, uh, I mean, it's difficult because, of, of course, you, you know, making Euphoria, I was still playing a woman who's kind of part of the context and world that I live in and, and, and is of this time. So I think, of course, that was maybe a, a way for me to kind of have similarities or be able to understand or feel like I've seen, you know, women like her in my surroundings that I've been able to take inspiration from. Um, but, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, that's your job of, of even, even if you don't, you know, even though I'm not like them, you know, my job is to try and justify and understand why they are the way they are. Okay, thank you. That's thank it. Thank you so much. Let's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.